All right, everyone, welcome, welcome. I am Tracy Black, and tonight we're going to be talking about creating testimonials that convert into sales. Yes, we all want more sales, right? Um, so we're going to be talking tonight about how testimonials are really going to be the cornerstone of our business, our stories, our testimonials on these products, why these testimonials are even more important right, than the facts and the figures and the science. I know for anybody who's like a science nerd and loves the science behind why the products work, you're like, wait a minute, I'm telling you, it's all about the testimonials. Yes, that's all good too, but I want to explain to you why testimonials are huge, 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 huge. So um, I got feedback last time when I was leading a Go-Getter Monday, I did a presentation because I personally am a very visual person. So I love to see like facts and figures and data and just content. So I created a presentation for you guys. I hope you're all super excited about it. Um, that if you haven't done it yet, tell us in the comment box where you're tuning in from. Okay, what you wanna learn tonight and have you ever shared a testimonial that actually turned into a sale. Tell us what you shared, where you shared it, what they got, because we're gonna have some time later to go over that. And I think it'd be really fun, a uh, fun way for us to learn. Okay, so give me one quick second. I'm gonna share my screen. And do me a favor and give me a thumbs up if you can see this. Yes, all good, okay. Thank you. All right, so for the next half hour or so, we're gonna be talking about how to create testimonials that sell. I'm telling you, this is gonna be the cornerstone of our business. So why are testimonials so effective? Um, we're gonna break it down tonight. We're really gonna get into the nitty gritty. We've had other calls where we really have dived into, you know, how to do it, how to prospect. So I'll share some of those resources later. Tonight, I actually really wanted to dive into the data behind testimonials. Um, if you didn't already know this, uh, before I came into Young Living, I worked in the corporate world, I actually have a digital marketing background. Um, I still enjoy doing lots of learning with digital marketing. Um, I still go to digital marketing conferences, even with my Young Living business, because I find it so fascinating. And I always try to find ways to apply that to my Young Living business. Let me just tell you, the last conference I went to, all they talked about was storytelling and testimonials. Billion dollar companies are spending tons of money on building testimonials and building stories. Why don't they just share fact sheets on their products, right? For their toothpaste, for their printers, for their automobiles, right? Because that's what we often think. People just wanna see the facts, the figures, um, like how it all works, the science. But really think about anytime you've ever bought anything, let me just tell you, I am very guilty of buying yoga pants, hats, right? So many different things, even shoes because of a testimonial that I either saw on social media, I saw on TV, or even better, I heard from a friend, right? They didn't go into the science behind why the yoga pants work. They didn't go into the fact sheet of, you know, why did, why do these pillows um, you know, why are they fluffier than the, the pillow next door, right? It was the storytelling. It was the testimonials that really brought me in. Um, and I'm sure you've got lots of examples of how that's worked too. So we're going to dive into some data because I love this stuff. So um, these are facts and figures that were pulled together by Boast.io. And so they pulled it from different sources and you can see this here. Um, so I really want you to look at this, okay? 92%. 90 freaking 2% of customers read reviews before they buy. I am so guilty of this. I will be in a restaurant and I will be looking at Yelp, looking at the like food photos before I even order and I'm already in the restaurant. So, you know, online reviews and testimonials are huge, right? And I want you to see this other, this other stat here. 70% of people trust reviews from strangers. If they trust from strangers, what about from people they already know, right? Huge. Your reviews, your testimonials have huge value on the circle of friends and family that you have. But for some of you, I know you're sort of like, I don't know, should I share this on social media? I don't really know these people. 
Well, there's the data right there from Nielsen. It says 70% of people trust reviews and recommendations from strangers. 88% of consumers say reviews influence their purchasing decisions. 72% um, of customers will take action only after reading a positive review. So I want you to think about this. How often are you sharing testimonials about Young Living products? How often are you sharing right, your stories about the Young Living business, right? Is, is this something that you're doing once a month, once in a while, or is this part of like your ongoing strategy where you're like, I am committing to doing this a couple of times a week. If you're not doing it, look at the data here, you're definitely missing out. Hold on, there we go. Sorry, it went too far ahead. Okay, here are some really cool stats. 73% of people will make a decision on buying after reading just six reviews. And for some people, these are probably our green personalities here, they're reading 10 or more reviews before they're buying. But you'll see the majority here is after six or so reviews. So think about it again, right? If you're sharing your testimonials once a month, once every couple of months, how long is it going to take for someone to get six testimonials out of you before they make a purchasing decision? They'll be making those decisions, 73%, right? So the more often you're sharing, the better. I think that's a really key stat to look at. Here's a few others, okay? Um, of the people, right? You know, using cust customer testimonials regularly can generate 62% more revenue, right? So for marketers, this is what they do, right? They're constantly sharing these, these testimonials. Um, in addition to that, you'll see that customers who interact with reviews spend 3% more per order. That could be you're sharing a testimony on Thieves Household Cleaner. Someone sees that and starts talking back and forth to you. Guess what they're going to be doing? They're likely going to be thinking, I need that Thieves Household Cleaner too. And you know what? In fact, maybe I'll add the dish soap or the laundry soap or something else on top of that. But do you see how big of an impact these reviews can have, not on just their purchasing decisions, right? But it also um, it is more, they're more likely to spend more money too. Okay, this I think is really interesting, is 79% of consumers who watch a video testimonial are more likely to buy. And in fact, marketers are saying that videos convert better for them 70% of them are saying more than other mediums. So that's other types of social media, print, email, everything. So I want you to think about this. Why is that? I will tell you again, why am I doing this presentation in this form? Because I'm a super visual person. How many of you, type in the comment box, how many of you are visual learners? You want to see, like I love to smell and touch as well, but if you're not in person with me, I want to see what you're doing. How many times have you bought something because you saw something on a Facebook ad? I am totally guilty of that. All kinds of things, because when I see how they're using it, it engages me, right? I'm interested. I can put myself in the shoes of the person that's using it. So video is very compelling because if you can't be in person with someone, right, they can still feel like they're there with you. They can feel like, okay, I'm opening it, this is what it looks like, here's how you use it, here's the result, maybe you show a before and after. So now kind of think about what are you doing, right, as part of like your strategy to share, how are you doing this? How are you incorporating this sort of video content? And we'll kind of get to this in just a little bit. So there are three ways, there's many more, but three ways that I really wanna talk about tonight. Um, on ways that testimon testimonials create sales. So one of the biggest reasons why testimonials work so well is it builds trust. It builds that credibility, not just for you, but for the company, for Young Living, and also our community, right? You may notice, like if you follow me or any of our, our leaders on our team, we'll often show um, you know, us getting together, us drinking Ningxia Red together, putting on charcoal masks together. I don't know about you, but when I see that, I think I want to be a part of that too. I want to be a part of it. I trust it, right? I, how do I get involved with that? 
So it builds that trust and credibility. The other thing that testimonials do is they make the data and the facts stick. So here's the interesting thing about facts and data is they can be refuted, right? They can always be refuted, but your testimonials can't. Why? Because they're your story. Who's going to say, I, I don't believe that story, right? You could always say something about the data or the facts, but nobody can, you know, overturn your story because it's yours. So I love that it's a great way to humanize the data and the facts, right? Make them stick because you're wrapping it around your testimonial. Another way that testimonials really work is that they don't feel salesy, right? It's not an infomercial, right? It's not like the Ron Popeil pasta maker. I've totally been guilty of like watching those infomercials like when I was younger. It's not that, right? It's your story. Because you're there sharing your story, it doesn't feel salesy to you or to the person watching, right? They don't feel that at all. Um, it's your story. So you're sharing your journey, your crossroad, your resolution. We're going to get into this in just a little bit. But this, again, goes back to you don't need to know all the ins and outs of why the products work. Maybe you, you know, try to memorize a couple of facts about it, but you don't need to know all the ingredients or the science because guess what? Young Living has data sheets on every single product that you can send to someone if they really wanted to look at it. What's most important is you're showing how you use it so it doesn't feel salesy. And the other secret to this is sharing often, right? Sharing how you use things, sharing these testimonials. But what if every time you shared a testimonial, you said, here's a link to buy, here's a link to buy, here's a link to buy, that could feel kind of salesy. But when you're just sort of sharing very organically, and then maybe once or twice in a week, you're like, oh, if you're interested, go click my link. You want to learn more? Just DM me, right? There's different ways you can do that. But this is one of the reasons why testimonials are so effective. They don't feel salesy. The other thing that testimonials do is they really help to overcome that skepticism, right? So even your tough sell prospects, right, who often can be our family and friends, you know, a good testimonial has the power to convince them because they can see your before and your after. Uh, my recommendation here is to just really be consistent in sharing those testimonials. Again, if you're doing this very infrequently, every few months, right, only when you see someone, um, then they won't see it as often. Um, so we're going to talk about social media in a little bit, but it's just so important to be sharing consistently. So let's talk about why we often don't share testimonials. Let's just kind of like break through some of this because I've been guilty of this too. Um, we think we're bad storytellers. Let me just tell you, I'm probably the worst joke teller in the world. My husband makes fun of me, like the worst, like terrible with the punchline. So it'd be easy to assume I couldn't be a good storyteller when it comes to my testimonials, right? I'm telling you, anybody can do it. The other reason why sometimes we don't share testimonials is we feel like, well, I wasn't cured or what there wasn't like this wow before and after. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to brand partners on our team who felt like, well, I just didn't feel like that was a good testimonial because it wasn't like this huge life-changing event. Um, so here's the thing about that is you, even just you being two steps ahead of someone who's just starting out, that is the wow. It doesn't need to be, I'm just making this up, right? Like my skin was awful, right? Had breakouts everywhere. And now my skin looks like a model. It doesn't need to be like this huge before and after, just the fact that you've made any progress, right, gives you the opportunity to share that testimonial. Now, the other thing I often hear, and I am so guilty of this myself, is we often hear with testimonials, you need to be vulnerable. And so sometimes what people feel like is, oh my gosh, be vulnerable. How do I do that? Does that mean I need to wear my heart on my sleeve and like cry and tell all these things? And I will tell you, you can share your testimonials in a way that feels authentic to you. Um, I can tell you just a quick testimonial, like my business testimonial, right? For us, it was, you know, we were working and my husband had um, chronic health issues. I mean, it was so bad, you guys. He had to have a handicap pass. He actually couldn't even go to work where right? he was out on medical leave. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, 
what if he can't work? How am I going to support my family? I was already working in a corporate job. It wasn't enough, at least not in Southern California, right, to pay our bills. And I remember thinking, what am I going to do? And when I, that's pretty much around the same time that I got started with Young Living because I was looking for cleaners that wouldn't aggravate his autoimmune symptoms. And then once I started seeing how it worked, my upline was like, hey, did you know you can make a business out of this too? And I'm like, wait, I can? I didn't even know that was even possible. I thought it was just like these oils that I bought. And then from there, I just started sharing and couldn't believe how easy it was. So do you see how I just shared like a business testimonial? I was vulnerable enough. I could even tell you a little bit more vulnerability, just feeling like overwhelmed and scared, right? But I'm not going to the point of like, we were desperate. We didn't know. Our checking account was drained. I didn't have to go into you know details like that. Just what I shared was authentic and vulnerable enough for the story. Does that make sense? You can be vulnerable to the point where you feel comfortable. You don't need to share everything. Just share the relevant things. I hope that helps. So every good testimonial does the same thing. And really the thing that I really want you to hear is that when you're sharing a testimonial, it feels like you're the hero, but you're not. You're the guide. So you're not Luke Skywalker, you're Obi-Wan Kenobi for any Star Wars fans out there, okay? So you're sharing the testimonial so that the other person listening will feel like, oh, me too, we're going through this together, but they're actually the hero. So you're guiding them through, okay? So your testimonial is huge, but that's what your testimonial does is it's the guide for someone else. Um, the other things, the other thing is that your, your every good testimonial will invite others on the journey. Your journey might already be complete, right? So our sort of autoimmune journey isn't necessarily complete, but we're on maintenance, right? But I have many other journeys where we're kind of just starting out. So you can invite people on the journey and you're, like I said, your journey might be in maintenance or it might've already been finished, but you can still invite them on the journey as if you were just starting it all over again. But every good testimonial you're going to find is going to have a before, a crossroad, and an after. And I'll get into more details in, in that in just a little bit, but I want you to write that down. Before, crossroad, after. And I'm going to show you how to craft a testimonial that has those elements. So with our testimonials, my recommendation is thinking about who your target audience is. So this is especially important when you're sharing on social media is, you know, are you talking to the ideal person, right? And are you addressing their pain point? You probably have the same pain points that they do. Usually I find, right, people following us or our friends and family, we relate to them in different ways, right? You know, most of my friends have kids. Most of my friends have kids who are a little bit older, right? They're not baby babies. They're, you know, middle school and high school. You know, you've already got things that you're kind of related to with people in a certain way. So you share likely similar pain points, right? So what could you share in terms of a testimonial that could really help to make their life easier? And I say, think of your target audience because, you know, think about this, right? If my target audience was like college boys, but I'm talking about life as a mom and not getting sleep. Do you see how it doesn't really align together, right? It's two totally different target audiences. But if I'm a mom of boys and I'm talking to other moms who have kids, we're gonna have very similar pain points, right? Just like a college, like a college young man is gonna have a similar pain point to other college kids, right? Probably lack of sleep, need some more energy. Actually, it does kind of sound very similar to a mom, right? Pulling all-nighters and cramming, um, but it's a little bit different. Um, so thinking about your target audience is going to be huge. Okay. Hold on, let's go back. Okay, now let's talk about the testimonial formula. We talked about this earlier, but this is where we're really gonna get into the nitty gritty, okay? So the before, what was your life like before, right? So in my sort of business testimonial, my husband and I worked two jobs, right? 
and we, it was, we were already just kind of like, just getting by. What was the crossroad for, for me, for that business story was he got sick. He got sick and he couldn't work for months at a time. And I was stressed thinking about how we're going to pay our bills. Right. So what did we do? Well, I started getting oils and thieves because I wanted to make my own cleaners, but then I found that I could start, you know, selling oils and doing this business, right. To pay for some bills, to pay for my products first, and then to start paying bills. And once I started doing that, I was like, I know I can do this and help other people too. So what is life like now? Well, I certainly don't stress, right. About medical bills. My husband's feeling well, which is awesome in part because he's using his oils and his supplements, but, um, we also have this flexibility and this freedom where we can travel, we can be with our kids, which has been amazing. Right. So do you see the, before the crossroad, the after what is life like now, right? Crafting that story. Maybe it's your sleep story. Maybe it's your gut health story. Maybe it's your, your joint health or pain story. There's different things that you could be sharing. Again, other people who are following you or who know you are probably going through similar things. And you can be as vulnerable as you are comfortable, but just remember those three things, the before, the crossroad, and what the after is like. And the crossroads kind of like something happened, right? There was a crossroad and you made a decision that puts you in a different trajectory. That's what the crossroad is. And maybe it's someone shared an oil with you. Someone invited you to a class. You saw someone on social media posting about um, an oil and decided to give it a try. That's certainly how I got started with oils myself. So the testimonial formula is amazing. So what can you do with this formula? You can do both product and business testimonials. I shared with you my business testimonial, but what I would recommend in this call, right after this call, spend some time doing it, is come up with five to 10 Young Living products that you can share testimonials on. And these are products that could help your target audience, okay? So come up, write down five products right now, okay? Five of your top products that have really helped you and you know could help other people too. And then after this call, start building out the stories, the testimonials for each of those products, the before, the crossroad, the after. You can do the same thing with the business opportunity. Create two to three, at least to start with that. Why did you decide to go for the business, right? Like what was that crossroad for you? And this is really the key point. And the reason why I wanted to show you the data earlier is you need to share these testimonials regularly. This cannot be something that you do every three months. If it takes someone six exposures or 12 exposures to actually then get converted into a sale, if you wait to do this even once a month, it could be a year before someone gets started, right? Someone who's in your circle um, of friends and family. By then, they might see testimonials from someone else and then decide to go for it rather than with you, even though you were the first one who started talking about it. So making this a part of your ongoing strategy of how you share is really going to be key. And social media is going to be a really key way to do it. So where can you share these testimonials? So like I said, social media. I mean, you guys, we are in such a... Um, a great place in terms of like being able to market, you know, I'll tell you, I feel like I'm dating myself here, but when I first got started in digital marketing, social media was not a thing. Uh, we didn't have that option. We had to do it in other ways. Right. And so being able to have social media as an option is huge because it's so easy to do. You could literally be in your pajamas and be sharing your testimonials, everything from videos. Can I just tell you, please write down videos and underline it like three times. Remember the data I just showed you, videos convert. So whether you're doing a story, right? And sharing a video that way, or you're doing an IGTV or a Facebook Live, those videos convert. It could be a how-to, it could be why you're using something, it could be your testimonial on, you know, why something helped you. Again, come up with those five testimonials and think about how you can leverage video for that. But you could also share on posts, 
I'm going to tell you, if you're on Instagram, I hope you're taking advantage of reels, like be doing at least a few of them a week because Instagram is really, really favoring that right now. But social media is such an easy way for us to consistently and very regularly, right, be sharing these testimonials. But outside of social media, what are some other ways that you could be sharing testimonials? In person, can I just tell you guys, there have been so many instances where I busted out my peace and calming roller or like my valor roller at the school pickup line, at a sports practice, right? Meeting up with old coworkers, or maybe you're still working. There's so many ways that you could do this. Just you using your products in front of other people and then sharing, right? How you use it and how it helps you is huge. Um, product placement is another really great way um, to be sharing um, our testimonials. So I will tell you, you cannot go more than three feet in my house without seeing some kind of Young Living product, whether it's like the sanitizer near my front door or like the diffuser or like the um, hand soap in my bathroom. And then I've got like a huge oil display like in my kitchen um, that I have them placed everywhere. So whenever people come to visit, they usually ask, I just love that hand soap that you have. Well, boom, that's my opportunity to go, oh, I love it. And then share a testimonial. I used to use insert whatever, dial. I can't even remember the other ones that I used to use before. Irish spring, whatever kind of foaming hand soap, right? That I used to use before and it would dry out my skin. And I, then I tell them why the thieves is so much better. So, so many different ways, even with just product placement. Um, and also building relationships, right? When you're out and about and building relationships with people, right? Finding needs, right? And then sharing those testimonials when the time is right. So let me just tell you, this doesn't mean, right? You have a friend on Facebook who posts about how they're not getting any sleep. And then you immediately comment and go, let me tell you my testimonial about Rudavala and here's my link to buy right? It could be, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Have you tried this? Have you tried that? You know, Rudavala has worked really well for me. Back and forth, back and forth, get that relationship going, right? Get that communication going. And when the time is right, you can share more info on your testimonial. It's really huge. So I wanted to share a few examples of how testimonials can turn into sales. And I'm going to go into the comments in just a bit. If you've got a testimonial that turned into a sale, I want you guys to paste it into the comments because it's so helpful for other people to see. But I wanna share one from Jamie Jo. She is having some work done to her house right now. She's got her oils out, she's got her things out and she had a contractor there and she was like, you need to try the CBD Calm Roller. And she talked about how she used it on herself and it turned into a $400 sale. And then that contractor got and subscribed to Safe with the Bar Soap to boot. So not only a one-time sale, but also in subscribe to save. And then Luann, who's on the call, um, also shared about how she used Copa Eva to help with her joint pain. And that became a sale for two separate people. And for me personally, you guys, my enroller, she was just sharing on her personal Facebook feed pretty regularly. I feel like three or four times a week. And after about a month, because I'm just very stubborn. And let me just tell you, I didn't engage. I didn't comment. I didn't like, I was like the worst lurker ever. So you may think you're sharing testimonials. People aren't engaging, but they're probably like me and they are just lurkers. Okay. Who else is a lurker? Just tell me, tell me I'm not alone. Type in the comment. Who else is a lurker? But I just kept watching and watching going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. How many times has someone said, oh, I saw you and the family on vacation. I saw you and so-and-so at dinner but they didn't engage on your social media post. They didn't comment, but they still see it. So do you see why it's so important to be really consistent in sharing your testimonials? I finally decided to get my kit because my enroller kept sharing. So frequency is really, really important. Okay, so what are we gonna do now? I mentioned this earlier, but create at least five product testimonials. And I want you to spend some time. We've got the full hour, okay? But you can spend some time and I'm happy to help anybody um, on the call who wants to just kind of like get some feedback on a good testimonial and also create two to three business testimonials because everybody on this call is looking to build a business as well, right? So we also wanna be sharing the benefits of the business and why we got started in the business. 
and then make a plan on how you're going to be sharing testimonials regularly. Um, in my opinion, I think we need to be doing it at least two to three times a week on social media. We've got some people who are doing it every single day. They are showing what they use. They are sharing how it works for them. They are sharing those testimonials every single day. When you feel like, you know what, I'm a little busy today. I don't know if I can share anything. Guess what? especially in social media, you can share other people's testimonials, okay? There's easy share features where you can go, okay, Luann shared something, Jamie Joe shared something, I'm gonna repost that so others can see that too. You could also work on helping your customers and brand partners create their own testimonials. Not only can that help within your community, right? Whether it's a community Facebook group, we love to share testimonials, right? In our Facebook group, our team Facebook group, but you could also teach them how they can share that because guess what? When they share, what are they going to get? Other people are going to get interested and will want to order as well. So teaching other people how to do it is really, really crucial too. Okay. I got one more slide for you. There we go. Okay. So resources, make sure you're bookmarking this gatherdwell.com. Okay. If you go just to gatherdwell.com, you'll see all of our resources there. But this URL, the YouTube biz, this is a playlist on YouTube of all of our business videos. Chelsea Gray just did one probably a couple of months ago, all about creating testimonials. And she got really in depth, you know, where you could do it for customers, for prospects, for business builders. So please go watch that one. I also did a video all about finding prospects and using testimonials for that. So be sure you look at that as well. We've got a ton more resources in there. So again, make sure if you don't remember the whole URL, just remember gatheredwell.com and then you'll see links there on how you can view all of our different team playlists. Love this. So this is so good. Okay, so I'm gonna share just a couple of testimonials um, here in um, the comment box because I think it's so powerful to hear all of this. So um, love this. So Michelle is saying, Michelle Jernigan said she shared her toddler tantrum roller. I love it. And a fellow toddler mom signed up with a hundred PV of kids stuff and got unsubscribed to save. Heck yes. How awesome is that? Right? You guys, you're, here's the thing. Another toddler mom, right? That's Michelle's target audience had a need had a pain point because her kid probably was having tantrums just like Michelle's kid was having. And she shared this roller. That's exactly what happened to me and why I said yes to the oils too, was my enroller was hitting a pain point. So love it, love it, love it. Um, who else has a testimonial to share? I'm going through here. Tantrum roller. Bridget is saying she shared how Sulprozyme supports her hair. And a girl jumped in after watching her for a very long time, right? Because Bridget is so great about sharing consistent testimonials. So do you see how huge this is? Who else is gonna be making a plan here to make sure they're gonna be consistently sharing their testimonials? Again, a few times a week at least, but we've got some people who are doing it every single day. And if they're not actually creating their own testimonials to share, they're sharing other people's testimonials, right? Because what does that do? It builds that credibility for the company, for you, for the products. So it's just huge. Okay, does anyone have any questions on building testimonials? Do you need help building testimonials? I am here to help. For anyone who thinks it needs to be perfect, just saying, recovering perfectionist here, <laughs> doesn't need to be perfect. In fact, I feel like the more real life as possible, just sharing real life, that's what people relate to. People don't relate to perfect. So if you're a recovering perfectionist, if you feel like you need to have data and facts and science, you don't. I'm telling you, that's what you can do. Okay, Michelle has a great question here. Do you have any tips for collecting testimonials from members so that you can share with them? Um, yes. So a couple of things that you could do is um, in your communication to them. If you email or text them, you could just ask and say, you know, I would love to be able to share this with our team 
or I would love to be able to share this on social media. I think you need to be like specific about the intent of what you want to do, but that could be a really great way to do it. Um, we've even done this in our Facebook group as well. So if you've got a, a team Facebook group, right, you could even post it in there. Who's got a testimonial for X, Y, and Z? Um, are you okay with me sharing this? So you can totally do that. But I think that's going to be really key. Savannah is saying, people watch more when I'm a hot mess. That's when I get the most messages. 1,000% hot mess express because guess what? You hit a pain point. They're like, she's a hot mess. I'm a hot mess. You know what? We're, we're, twins, we're twinning here. So like, I feel like whatever she's going to say is really going to help me. Because again, nobody relates to perfection. It's like so out of touch. It doesn't, it's not relatable. Love it. Um, let's see. Hannah is saying she found her stories just winging it goes a way farther than having a planned testimonial. Yes, Hannah, I love that. And I think this really speaks to different personalities. For some, it might just be I'm winging it and I'm going out there. Maybe you don't even have like a specific topic that you plan on going with and you run. You're probably already naturally gifted at storytelling to begin with. For others, who may be more of a green personality. You might be hearing me talking about personalities. It's this, again, go under our Gather Dwell YouTube channel and you'll find it. It's in our Facebook groups as well. These are called color personalities. In a nutshell, a green personality really likes details. They like to feel prepared before they do something. That's me. I don't need to have a dissertation, but I like bullet points. It's hard for me to kind of go off the cuff, although I can train myself to do it after all this time. But I like to know what I'm going to talk about, and then I can kind of go off the cuff. So it really just kind of depends on your personality. But yes, yeah, sometimes when it's not super well planned, like it's in the moment, like maybe you had a blemish, right? And you put on lavender and like hours later, you're like, holy cow, it's gone. I'm going to do a video right now. Be in the moment. Go share that. I think it's awesome. Love it. Robin is saying, I've been really sick and getting and getting together all the things I did. Any advice on how many products to talk about at a time? Yeah, Robin, this is a really, really good question because we don't want to talk about like 50 products, right? That can be very overwhelming. Um, I think, think in terms of like, um, like bundles, like maybe bundles you can put together. And let me just tell you, my husband was a hot mess, okay? autoimmune issues, celiac, right? Pain. He had like so many different things. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy town. So you could even just sort of share like little bits at a time. So maybe you decide, you know what, today I'm going to share on gut health stuff. I'm going to share like three to five different gut health products that have been really beneficial to me. And then maybe next you could talk about um, joint health, like three to five products that have really helped with your joint health. And then after that, you could talk about um, immune support. So, you know, you can kind of like break it down. And you know what? That's kind of nice because, you know, you could really kind of stretch out what you're talking about. In fact, right, it could be for a whole week. I'm going to talk about gut support products. Day one, I'm talking about, you know, digestive enzymes. Day two, I'm talking about Life9. Day three, I'm talking about uh, Ningxia Red. So there are different ways you can do this. But yes, I think the brevity is going to be really important, right? Like not the whole kitchen sink, right? Let, let's just kind of break it down little by little um, and sharing bits at a time. My brain works in themes or categories, but again, that's my crazy green meeting detail and things in order. For some people, it's just like, I'm going to run and go, right? Today, I'm just going to share on sleepy eyes. Tomorrow, I'm going to be sharing on Ningxia Red. And that's okay too. So do whatever works for you. The point is not, you know, having all the details first and then doing the testimonials after. The point is start sharing your testimonials and do it consistently. Love it. Such good question, you guys. Questions. Yes, yes. So happy to help. Does anyone need help building a testimonial? Do you have questions on the before, the crossroad, the after? I hope you know, again, just wanna really bring home the point. You don't need to have a huge wow before and after, right? You being two steps ahead is already more progress than someone who starts at zero. 
Remember that, okay? Just being two steps ahead can be huge. Let me just tell you, when I had a colicky baby, if someone was two steps ahead, I would have paid them thousands of dollars because I had no sleep and we were like zombies. If someone had given me sleepy eyes, I would have been so grateful, right? Just to have a little bit of sleep. So again, just a little bit can go a really long way. Yeah, gentle baby, right, Hannah? Love it. Okay, are, do you have any questions or do you have any testimonials that you want to share tonight? Anything else that we haven't covered? I'm going through comments real quick to make sure I didn't miss anything. Who else is thinking, I need to get on the ball and be sharing testimonials more often? Me, me too. Yep, I'm guilty. Yeah, Hannah, we would love, love, love to have you talk. Come on in. Okay, so really quick, something that I have found that's working is to do your testimonial and then save it to highlights. So you're not having to say the same thing over 5 million times, but it's there all the time. And then I'll just keep referring to it. Like it's in highlights or I'll be drinking my nature and I'm like, go check out this highlight. This is why I drink it. Um, it just saves you so much time because I don't have the time <laughs> to do it. Um, so if I can just record it once and have it done is so nice. And then when people come to your page, they can read across those little bubbles and go, oh, okay. So this is about the farm. This is about whatever. Um, and they kind of know what your favorite things are before you even say anything. So just want to say that quick. Girl, that is so good. I 1000% agree. Save to highlights. Be saving them. Um, wherever you're putting your videos or your content, yes, save to highlights, especially if you're on Instagram. That's where it's really great. Um, let's see here. Yes, everyone's agreeing too. Anybody else have a tip to share a testimonial or a question? We've got a couple of minutes and then I'm going to let you run free for some time so that you can create your testimonials. Hannah is saying she has her people watch the veggie wash video. <laughs> See, this is another example. Hannah shares Savannah's veggie wash video, right? So it's not even her own testimonial, but because she's consistently sharing testimonials, do you see? It doesn't necessarily always have to be your own testimonial, but you're sharing other people's testimonial. And let me just kind of tell you something, um, just from my own experience, I would highly recommend sharing testimonials on our own, in our own community. Does this make sense, right? If you've got, we had a great, um, that we had a, a great meetup. Um, it was a retreat with our convention team. So some of you on the call tonight and Jen Gaskell did a whole call about social media and sharing content. Um, and one of the things I will never forget, and I was like, yes, I cannot agree more is we have so much talent and testimonials just on our own team, our own greater team, right? So need to be careful when you're sharing testimonials from other people who are not on the same team. Not that they are not great testimonials, but again, it's just one of those things where we have so much great talent and great content and information, but you kind of never know when it's someone else, right? Cross line, like way, way, way in another team, um, what's gonna happen with that? So I highly recommend, right, sharing. Like if you have accountability buddies, you have people that you're constantly sharing with, I will tell you there's a group of like five or six of us and we're constantly sharing each other's videos and it's like, there's this trust and it's amazing. Um, so within our team, yes, fantastic, but just be you know aware of who you're sharing, right? Because I feel like that really makes a huge difference. Love it. So Savannah is saying, if you didn't already know this, okay, let's say on Instagram, you already did a story and it went away. You know how stories go away after 24 hours? Well, there's a way to grab those old stories and create a highlight out of it. You just go to highlights, click that plus button, and you can actually go through old stories and click them and add them to um, a current, like a new highlight. So if you didn't know that, definitely do it. 
And if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me just tell you, I didn't know either. Um, I had to Google a lot of things and Google is your friend, okay? So if you need to Google, that's okay too. Love it. Okay, so- Can I share something real quick? Yes, Ashley, please go for it. <clears throat> um, sorry, I'm a little dark. Um, if you also go up on your profile, in the top right corner, there's the three lines where your settings are. If you click your archive, you can see all of your posts that you've made, all of your stories, all of your reels, all of your Instagram posts, and you can share the highlights there. Thank you so much for sharing that, Ashley. That is so helpful. See, we're full of great ideas tonight. I love it. Thanks, girl. Luann, Instagram for dummies book. Yeah, you know what? Google it. That's what I do. I Google everything. If I don't know, I just Google. Or I watch my other friends who do it well and they emulate what they do. Love it. Okay. Any other questions, comments, tips? I want to make sure you've got at least a good 10 minutes, right? You've got this hour scheduled. So use the remaining time after this call to build out at least five testimonials for products and at least two to three okay, for your business. And you could just like outline and maybe flesh it out later if you need to, but writing it down is gonna be huge. And think about, again, your target audience. Who are you talking to? What are their pain points? They're probably your pain points too. And then be thinking about the products that you can share, right, to address those pain points. Love it, love it. Yeah, Bridget has great advice. Google, watch others, practice, practice, practice. And can I just tell you something? You know, before starting this Young Living business, never thought I'd be one to be sharing testimonials, never thought I'd be one to be doing videos um, or any of it. And you know what? You get better with practice. And really when you're speaking from the heart, it just makes it so much easier. It doesn't feel like a sale, right? It doesn't feel icky. It feels authentic and real. And it feels like you're just talking to a girlfriend over a cup of coffee. So that's how I like to share testimonials is like, you know, thinking about if we were sitting across from each other and sharing a cup of coffee, what would I share with you? So I speak very colloquial, right? I will just be like, let me just tell you the real deal. And that's the way that I like to share my testimonials. Love it. All right, you guys, that's it. Okay, mark it down, write it down. You're gonna do five to 10 testimonials. You're gonna be sharing those testimonials two to three times a week. Make this a part of your strategy. Who's in? Type it in the chat box, who's in? Say, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in too. I'm guilty of not doing it as often as I should. So I'm in too, I'm doing this with you. Okay, so the next 10 minutes working on it. If you have questions, message me or follow each other. That's also another great way to see how other people are doing it. Um, and be sure tomorrow, thinking about testimonials, you guys, we're doing an oily underground tomorrow, all about favorite oily protocols. So we're not talking about a specific topic. We're just sharing everything in the kitchen sink. So that will be another great way to get some testimonials, right? Where you can learn how to do things and share your own testimonials too. So thank you everybody for joining tonight. You are amazing. I'll have the replay up very, very shortly. Check out the Gather Dwell um, resources that we have like our Dropbox and our YouTube channels. We've got great videos in there for you to watch as well. All right, thanks everybody. Take care, have a great night.